Show, everybody. Thank you so much. Please have a seat. Oh, so nice to be here among friends. Um, well, let's see. Everybody take a deep breath. Donald Trump isn't president yet. Uh, but, but, also Barack Obama is overseas, so I think that means I'm in charge. Um, as you were, smoke them if you got them. Uh, Obama has left the country because uh, he's not an idiot, and he, he's overseas uh, trying his best to convince foreign leaders that Trump will be a responsible pragmatic president. Then those leaders can fly back over here and try to convince us because <laughs> I still have my doubts. You know, <laughs> give him a chance. You know, give him a chance, like a, like a game of chance. Uh, <laughs> Trump certainly feels like a crapshoot, I'll tell you that much. Um, here's one of the reasons why uh, Barack Obama has not entirely calmed me down. Jim, can we show uh, the footage when Obama and Trump were in the Oval Office again? We now are going to uh, want to do everything we can to help you succeed, because if you succeed, then the country succeeds. Okay, first, I would have more confidence if you could say that without looking like you were passing a 65-pound kidney stone. <laughs> Second, uh, if he succeeds, we all succeed, you know what he means by success, right? Have you seen the successory poster on his wall? Make zebras great again. <laughs> now, Obama is in Greece right now, and uh, I really think Europe is going to miss Obama. And if Trump pulls out of NATO, uh, Europe is really going to miss Europe. <laughs> Meanwhile, back stateside, America's new stepdad, uh, Don, has told his aides that instead of living in the White House, Trump would like to do what he's used to, which is spending time in New York so he can wake up in his own bed in Trump Tower. This, this, is, this is the first president who considers living in the White House slumming it. 132 rooms, 55,000 square feet, I'll pass. Does President-elect Trump not understand the number one job requirement? It's right there in the Constitution. Must be willing to relocate. <laughs> Look. <sighs> Just, Don, this is personal. This is, no, no, look, this is personal. On behalf of eight million people, please don't come back every week to New York. I am begging you. The one week a year when Obama comes in for the U.N., it's like the fall of Saigon meets Dante's Inferno meets World War Z around here. <laughs> and now the Secret Service says they're going to close parts of Fifth Avenue. Traffic's going to be so backed up, people in their cars will start drinking their own urine to survive. <laughs> Whole generations of New Yorkers will be born and die without ever leaving their Uber. <laughs> Why and why, for the love of Pete, would you want to come back to New York? 86% of Manhattan voted against you. Your front door is blocked by 10,000 people screaming at you. And plus, I've been there. The White House is very nice. It has 35 bathrooms. You can sit on the same toilet Lincoln tweeted the Gettysburg Address from. I've been honest to God. Fifth Avenue. That's the goes down the center of the island. That's like a doctor saying, we're just going to take out your spine. Everything else is going to stay. Right. It's true. It's just true. the middle vertebrae. Just those. Yeah. In other uh, trumpeting, uh, there is surprising news from the transition team. Dr. Ben Carson said today that he's not interested in serving in the Trump administration. His spokesman said, Dr. Carson feels he has no government experience. He's never run a federal agency. The last thing he would want to do is take a position that could cripple the presidency. Now, <laughs> hold on a second. Just wait a sec. Hold your horses. Didn't Ben Carson run for president? <laughs> what was his plan? Resign on day one? Did I miss something? I don't know. What the Was his campaign slogan, that. Carson 2016, I will cripple the presidency? 
That makes no. I will. I will cripple the presidency. I will. I will do it. I will. You must. Marco. 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 Now you may ask yourself, how did we get here? Well, a lot of people think that Donald Trump won because of Facebook. Partly because on Facebook, it's okay to poke without consent. But mostly, <laughs> mostly because Facebook is full of fake news stories that get shared widely without being fact-checked. Like, FBI agents suspected in Hillary email leaks found dead in apparent murder-suicide, Bill Clinton's sex tape leaked, and Oprah tells Fox News hosts some white people have to die. <laughs> now, come on. Come on, no. I don't no. think you know that's not. Yeah, Oprah would not. never say that to Fox News. She would say it on the cover of O Magazine. <laughs> but these fake stories were shared all over the place, which is a problem because studies say that 44% of adults get their news via Facebook, which explains the new senator from Colorado. Picture of a minion saying, talk to the hand. <laughs> now, Facebook CEO and Jesse Eisenberg impersonator Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> has responded to the controversy saying, to think Facebook influenced the election in any way is a pretty crazy idea. And he knows it's crazy because he read it on Facebook. <laughs> so just where are these stories coming from? It turns out that a hundred different sites came from teenagers in one small Macedonian town who were looking to make money online and found that the best way to generate shares on Facebook is to publish sensationalist and often false content that caters to Trump supporters. Which brings me to my new segment, Hey, Macedonian Teens! <laughs> hey, 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 Macedonian Teens! Knock it off! <laughs> Why can't you just do normal teenager stuff, like put M-80s in mailboxes, or get to third base behind the Hardys, or <laughs> steal a mannequin and set it on fire in the woods? <sighs> and that has been Hey Macedonian Teens. Now, there is some good news. There is some good news. As of today, Facebook will restrict these fake news sites. Now, they're going to restrict them. Also, while we're at it, let me just close these barn doors so those stupid cows can't get back in. Ah. Enjoy your field, stupid <laughs> cow. <laughs> now, I lock that. I lock that. I need that. I need that right there. You guys want something to distract you from Donald Trump? Well, too bad, because internet porn has been compromised. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. The hookup and porn site Adult Friend Finder has been hacked in one of the biggest data breaches ever. Of course, a lot of people on there lie about the size of their data breach, but it's still pretty big. <laughs> the hack has released information on more than 412 million user accounts. This is worse than WikiLeaks. That's why I'm calling it WankyLeaks. <laughs> now, this is good news. And bad news for all the adult friends. The bad news is this might lead to humiliation and blackmail. The good news is you might be into that. <laughs> Speaking of exchanging fluids, uh, a... We're all adults. Uh, a new study has found that blood from human teens can rejuvenate the body and brains of old mice. So, hey, 18 to 24 year olds who decided not to vote, I think we just found out what Trump's gonna replace Obamacare with. <laughs> He's gonna stick a straw on you like a Capri Sun. <laughs> now, the one bit of hope I take from this is that if young people's blood can rejuvenate the elderly, I say we hook up Ariana Grande to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> show for you tonight. Anna Kendrick is here. Maybe she'll sing. Stick around.